Hello, fellow guitar geeks. It's me, Andy, here with the Delay Llama version 3. It's my first pedal from Jam Pedals in Greece. It's handmade, it's wonderfully, beautifully, gorgeously inspiring, and I am super chilled out playing with it. So this feels like a low-key video, so I'll, I'll try to inject some energy, but at the moment, I'm just kind of chilled. I've got a double helping of Fender today. This is the Fender 66 with some Fretlook inlay stickers. That's going through the Fender Deluxe Reverb amp, through some V30s, and I'm using the, the Capture X to get that into your ears. I'm also getting a bit of drive from the Orange Getaway driver. So if I turn it off, this is what the guitar sounds like without the drive. And then kicking the pedal back in. So nothing insanely distorted, just a little bit of hair when I dig in. Let's hear the top five tones of the Delay Llama version three. Dalai Lama. There, I've got it out of my system. It's been in my head since I've been starting looking at making the video, and now I can say it. Dalai, Dalai Lama. Delay Llama. This is version three of the Delay Llama, and the Delay Llama at its core is a Bucket Brigade device BBD analog delay pedal. Whew, lots of stuff to get out. Um, they've added several things in Mark III compared to version two. I've never played version one. I have played version two. The immediate difference is here we have a tap tempo, so you can adjust the time on the pedal by either adjusting the time knob or by tapping in your tempo to a maximum of 600 milliseconds. Traditionally, the Delay Llama has been a true bypass pedal. This version allows you to switch between true bypass and buffered. So let's go over the pedal and I'll explain what the knobs and switches do. At the top left is L for level, which opposed to a mix knob, this adjusts the level of the delay signal. So with the pedal off, uh, let's do something. Turn the pedal on. <laughs> Adjust that first. Delay on. And this is just adjusting how loud the delay is. So no delays. This one, anything above, about there, is going to have the delay signal louder than the actual original signal. You hear it jump out. If you want it about the same level, it's about 12. Okay, so that's your level of your delays, not a mix knob. Uh, down below it is the repeats. So down here, turn it down, gives us a minimum number of repeats. And up here is our maximum number of repeats. 
which will also begin to self-oscillate if you have your pedal settings right or wrong, depending how you look at it. Um, over here is, uh, oh, actually, repeats. There's a not so secret function because it's in the manual. Inside, and we'll do that later on in the video, you can adjust the maximum number of repeats with a little uh, micro knob thingy. So we'll open the pedal up in a bit and we'll do that, I promise. Up here is the time. So down here is the lowest of the time and you can see that the LED is flashing. That's cool, that's like a, like a ring modulator. Or a really small room. Cool. Okay, it can get nuts if you do that. That should have gone on the top five tones. All right, be careful with that one, especially with that level knob. I was going to do some experimenting later, but it seems that we're doing it now. We will do more later. You be quiet. Let's move on to this switch, which is the subdivision switch. We've got quarter notes, we've got eighth notes, and we've got dotted eighth notes. I have trouble saying eighth. Down here on the switch, uh, on the foot switch, is the tap. So we can tap to our hearts and foot's content, or our fingers content, and this turns the pedal on and off. Also, the pedal does that ramp up thing. If I set, yeah, leave it there and go. So things can get wonderfully, wonderfully weird. Still going. Anyway, back to the pedal. Signal in, signal out, and nine volts in. There's no battery compartment or anything like that. That's the surface level of the pedal explained. Now onto the more hidden features. As I mentioned, the Delay Llama version three can be switched between true bypass or buffered mode. It comes stock as true bypass, which means that when you turn the pedal off, the trails will die like this. Dead. Still there, but you're not hearing them because the signal's going into the pedal, bypassing everything and going out again. If we set this to buffered mode, those trails will continue once you turn the pedal off. I'll show you how. All you have to do is take out the power cable and then hold down the tap foot switch. And then this LED will flash three times when I plug it back in. One, two, three. So now when I play something, the trails will continue when I turn the pedal off. There we go, so you can see, well, they were continuing when it was in true bypass, you just couldn't hear it. In fact, let's set that up, like put a really long one on and then turn it on. There we go. Okay, to put it back to true bypass, all you have to do is take out the power cable and then hold the tap down. And this time it'll flash twice. There we go. Now we know it's back in true bypass mode. And every time you turn the pedal on, it will tell you which mode it's in. You just need to remember two flashes is true bypass, three flashes is buffered. Not that we have uh, space. In, well, I don't have space in my brain to remember that, but it's useful to maybe keep the manual with you. So it looks like a simple pedal to operate and it is pretty simple but let's find out if it sounds any good. I've done top five tones, I know it sounds good. I just wanna play around and experiment with it, with you, you know, let's do it together. Let's go from minimum repeats to maximum repeats and, and see what happens. Let's just fiddle with the knobs. Okay, it's back in true bypass, so this trail died. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, so you've got a maximum repeat time of 600 milliseconds. The repeats you can set internally, which we'll fiddle around with later. Let's check out, uh, let's put that somewhere sensible and check out the divisions. Uh, 
Ah, okay. I didn't set the time with the tap tempo, so it doesn't know what I'm doing. So because I set the time here, you can't change the divisions. Okay. <laughs> Analog delay pedals are so much fun. Bit clean. I'm going to dirty it up with the with the getaway driver. Stop. So yeah, it's it, it almost puts it in a room. It's kind of small roomy reverb. It's very dark sounding as most analog delay pedals are. And it's a nice quality darkness. It's not like it loses all clarity and fidelity. I'm really, really enjoying that, that warmth, that roundness and all those other words that we use to describe guitar sounds. Brown, maybe mottled brown. Okay, um, let's mess with the time there maximum time. Here we go. The thing with delay pedals is when you play a bum note, it plays a bum note. They should really make a delay pedal that fixes your notes. That I, I'd, I'd buy that. That's really roomy. That's like you recorded something in a in a undesirably bad room. Okay, let's boost up those repeats. Pedal is dangerous. I feel like I've crossed the streams. <laughs> okay, you can make it do laser gun sounds. Brilliant. What a great pedal. Well, I guess the time has come to open up the back, crack it open and look inside because I want to number one, flex that I've got a really cool electric screwdriver drill. Number two, check out the build quality of the Delay Llama version three. And of course, mess with those trim pots and see what other weird and wacky sounds I can make. Screwdriver time. Here it is. Let's just put the amp on mute for a second before I blow anything. Take that. Oh, goodness. That was it's tight. Toy like a toyger. Yeah. Right, back cracking the back open. That's not part of the pedal. That's just for me to uh, keep the pedal in one place. These screws seem slightly longer than screws normally are on the backs of pedals. That might be just me. All right. Oh, okay. Look at that. So we've got. It says jam pedals. Let's zoom in. It says DL two five five two. That's my serial number. Cool. Okay, there's the hand painted enclosure. Then in the back, we've got all that stuff going on. There's actually three, four. There are four trim parts. I was expecting two. Which two do I mess around with? Oh dear, I don't want to break the pedal. Um, let me consult the manual quickly. Ah, there's a little diagram to tell me where. Um, oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Hang on. Right, I got it. It's not these. These four blue ones is not it. There's a little picture in the manual there, which which corresponds to the diagram, uh, the circuit layout. Sorry, there's a hole there. 
And then there's a little knobby switch here. So number one is the internal trimmer to set the trails fade out time. And number two is the internal trimmer to set the max number of repeats. Multi-turn. I'm gonna plug it back in and adjust these things as I'm playing, I guess. Right, we zoomed out again. Now that's that's gotta go on that side this time. That's gotta go over there. And then that's the power. Wonderful, cool beans. Right, it's on? Yes, it's on. Okay, so flashing lights, flashing lights are good. And then I need a screwdriver. Here. All right, so this one, this one is for, what was it? The maximum number of repeats, a multi-turn. I don't know what a multi-turn screw is. That, that screwdriver's too big. Luckily, I've got another side. Ha ha ha. Okay, I don't know what multi-turn. That oh, means it just goes round and round, I guess. Okay, um, it was it was set in the middle. I don't know how many times I've turned that now. And then we'll turn the maximum up to maximum. And then I'll just play a note, I guess. Turn the amp back on. It's fun, but I, I can't get the screwdriver and hold the guitar. Now I've dropped my pick in there. Oh, come on, Andrew. <laughs> Genuinely, has anyone ever dropped a pick in a pedal before and lost it? Oh no. <laughs> oh, jam pedals, I'm so sorry. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's now a, a Dunlop Max Grip pick stuck in the, in the Delay Llama. Oh, that's never going to come out. Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, that's going to stay there for now. Luckily, it's not made out of metal and um, going to cause any problems, but I just need another pick. Pit, pick pot. Right, okay. So I could have turned that with my pick, maybe. Ah, oh, yes, you can. Oh, that's useful. Okay, or well, useful, that's dangerous. You could lose a pick in there. Two hours later. Okay, um, there's, you can do that. Uh, I... That's weird. Okay, uh, I don't think I should be allowed to mess with things like that. Let's try the, the, the other trim pot. Trim pot number one for the, the trails fade out time. Oh, that, hang on. So I need to put it into... Come here. I need to put it into buffered mode, I think. Turn that off. All right, number th that's three three flashes. That means it's in buffered mode. And now, what kind of screw is that in there? That's one of those screws. Okay, is my screwdriver going to fit in there? Yes. No. I need another screwdriver. Now, I don't think I should be doing this screwdriver with the pedal turned on, because if I touch something, surely I break it. But I guess don't touch it. I oh, did something then. Hang on. Okay, it's definitely making a difference. It's really hard for me to successfully get that across in a video. So I'll turn that over and I'll play and then we'll set the trails is set to quite a short time at the moment. Now, I'll adjust the trim pot, and that should be longer this time. Setting it up. Turn it on.
But what I'll do is I'll I'll turn that down. There we go. If I did, did I turn it down? There. Now it's a it's a short um, time. So that dies quite quickly. Now, if I turn it up, the trails will last longer. Turn it on. It's still there. Okay, that's a really long time. Still there, starting to self-oscillate. I, I think, I mean, I've done this in the name of science and in the name of making a video for you lot. I think that was too long. Uh, yeah, that seems sensible. And then as for the max, maximum number of repeats, of repeats, I don't know. I may have just changed it from the golden setting to something that's completely, completely useless. Darn it. Um, okay. Yeah. Time for the review, I guess. I better put the pedal back together first, though. Ah, the pig fell out! Ha <laughs> ha! Didn't expect that to happen. Golden. Golden moment. How do you get a pick out of a pedal? You just wait until it's had enough time in there, and then it comes out when it's ready. Like a baby. Alrighty, it's back together, it's in one piece, and I've tested it, it's working, everything's fine and fan dabby dozy. The review part of this video, I guess it's kind of tough and kind of easy because it is a simple pedal, but seems to have some stuff under the surface which does more. The guess, the, the first thing I should talk about really is um, there's a bit of fluff on it. That's the first thing, there's a bit of fluff on it. The second thing is that the sound coming from this is extremely musical, extremely inspiring. And I think I said this at the beginning of the video, I've been playing with it for quite a while. It's very, very different to say the D1 V2 that I reviewed recently, or I will review, don't know which order they're coming up on the channel. But this is an analog delay, and the Walrus Audio D1 V2 is a digital delay. This one is a very different beast, although on the surface it's a delay pedal, so therefore it's the same. It isn't. This is wonderfully self-oscillating. It's, it's, it's kind of like a guitar in the way that you, when, hmm, think before you speak. It's like a guitar, and when you mess with feedback and you stand in a different position and, and play with guitar feedback and, and woo, woo, it gets all whittlies, the pedal interacts with itself and it self oscillates and you can really get some interesting sounds just from the pedal itself uh, and plugging the cable in and out. Let me do that for you, in fact. So it's not very musical, but you get the idea that you can create something without actually needing any instrument going into it, just a cable. But any any analog delay does that, or any analog, sorry, any analog delay should do that, I guess. I've never played one that hasn't. The thing is, with the tap tempo, the addition of a few features, this makes it um, certainly a better choice than version 2. And what uh, jam pedals have done is they listen to people of version 2, and what do people in version 3 want? They want a tap tempo. And that's something that, even though it doesn't have MIDI or anything like that, because it's it's then an analog delay, uh, the tap tempo makes it far more usable for someone like me, because I sing and play at the same time mostly, and I don't want to be going down on the floor and fiddling with the time. And also, if the timing's slightly out during a song, if the band decides to speed up or slow down, you could just bring yourself back in time with a little bit of a tap tempo, which um, I, I, I feel lost with that tap tempo. So I'm glad it now has it. If it didn't have it, I'd be saying less nice things. Price-wise, it's 250 euros. Not a cheap pedal. It is handmade. It is hand-built. It is hand-painted in Athens, Greece. I think, I think 250 euros, if you've ever done any work in your life on any pedal of any kind, then you'll know that 250 euros is actually not a lot of money because pedals take time and art takes time. So it's more than just a delay pedal, more than something that just makes a sound. I guess they're trying to say it's a piece of art, and it, it kind of is, because it's some of my favourite colours, red, white, and black. So of course I'm going to say it looks good. 
you should have got the gist of the pedal for so far in this video, but the bottom line is that if you want a delay pedal that's analog, does up to 600 milliseconds, has tap tempo, and you have 250 euros to spare, whatever that is in dollars, probably $280 and about 220 pounds, then the Delay Llama version three from Jam Pedals is definitely, definitely a contender. And if you like red, black, and white pedals, then just get it anyway. This is gonna make its way into some music that I make because I was using a Joyo delay that has no tap tempo and it's very frustrating for me. This one solves that problem. And that is it, my geeky friend. That's the end of the video, which means you have made it to the end of the video club. When you leave your comment on the video telling me what you think of the Delay Llama version three, please include the phrase, it really whips the llama's butt. And that'll let me know that you've watched this part of the video and you know, you're in the end of the video club. Congratulations. That just leaves me to say thank you to Jam Pedals for sending this out and for sponsoring the video. I've got some more Jam Pedals content coming up very soon. So if you like that, then hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, um, I'll be here waiting. Just sat here for when you click the button next. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.